uh, Salem Fellowship Luncheon, and uh, then also our Bible study on Wednesday, because it's same week, on Thursday, we'll be having a Holy Thursday communion service here at noon, and then at 1 o'clock, we'll be having our Bible study after that. Friday, we will have the church open. I'll have some devotional aids for you, and you can come at your leisure to, uh, to pray. Prayer list and some other readings that you can do, and so you can come anytime during that day. We'll be open probably at eight uh, in the morning, and then I'll, I'll close this up in the evening as well. So uh, that's on Friday. Then on, sa- on Sunday, um, on Saturday you can bring the flowers if you like between ten and. They can bring them earlier if they want. We were here a little earlier breaking the cloth and stuff. So okay. I would say probably any time from eight thirty to. Okay, eight thirty to eleven. Bring any flowers of your choice, and then you can also take them home after Easter Sunday, or deliver them to someone else that you like to deliver them to. So instead of ordering from one supplier, you just bring your own flowers, and make sure that you email me your dedication, and then I can also publish your dedication in memory or in honor of someone. So please do that. That is on Saturday. And then on Sunday morning, of course, at 6.45, we'll be meeting down at the cemetery for our, uh, for our son, wise service. And if it's raining out in front of we'll do that here. Okay? And then following right after that, there is a breakfast. And then we meet back here for at 10 o'clock for our regular resurrection celebration. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell them that the Lord needs them, and they will send them right away with you. This took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? And the crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth and Galilee. And so the same question begins our worship this morning. Who is this?
Join me in our call to worship this morning. This is a day to let your heart take control of your lips. You can't keep silent. Our hearts are bursting with praise for Jesus, the King of our lives. In spite of the shadow of the cross over the palm-strewn way, Jesus rides in the hearts of those who surrender to him. We commit ourselves wholly to Jesus and ask him to be present in our Amen. I'm going to invite you that as I lead us in a couple of spiritual songs, that you'll observe social distancing, but come forward through the center aisle, take yourself a palm and then process with it back to where you are seated. And the first one is found in number two, the King of Glory Comes. The King of Glory comes, the nation rejoices, Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promise of ages. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee and city and village, he goes among his people curing their illness. The King of glory comes, the nations rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Sing of David, son, our Savior and brother. In all of Galilee was never another. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. The next one is found in your small black hymnal, number 2075. And it's entitled, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But there's something special about it. As with most Jewish tunes, you start out slow and you get faster. And you get faster. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of peace and glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of peace, glory, hallelujah. Of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of peace and glory, hallelujah. Jesus, Prince of peace and glory, hallelujah. King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Hallelujah, King of kings and Lord of lords, glory. Hallelujah, Jesus, Prince of peace and glory. Hallelujah, Jesus, Prince of peace, glory. Hallelujah. And maybe next year I'll grab a couple of you and I'll teach you the Jewish dance that goes along with that. Maybe that's not wise, because that means you might write it down and remember it, and then not show up next Palm Sunday. <laughs> Let's have some prayer. Gracious God, we thank you as we witness once again your plan of salvation for all humanity unfold. We are amazed at the crowd that gathered to welcome him, and join in the celebration of him whom we know came in your name. May our hearts be filled with joy as we acknowledge how you have come into our hearts. 
We are blessed by the opportunity of grace and forgiveness his death provides us. We are humbled by the realization that the many who sang his praise had conflicting agendas and asked that we might have only one agenda to follow you and witness to the world that you are the way, the truth, and the life. As you entered Jerusalem, and cleanse the temple, cleanse us, O Lord, that the sincerity of our offering be true to your purpose for our lives. Amen. And now I invite you to rise to your feet with your palms and lift your voices with mine as we sing hymn number 280, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. children may sweet Hosanna's day. The King of Israel, your David's royal son, who in the midst in calmness the King and blessed God. And all in honor to the redeemer king to whom the lips of children their sweet hosannas ring the company of angels are praising the on high and mortal man and all things created Glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may sweet Hosanna sing. The people of the Hebrews with palms before the wet our prayer and praise and anthems before the we present. Hosanna, God, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may street house on us ring, to thee before your passion, they sang their hymns of praise. To thee now high exalted, our melody we raise. All glory, Lord, and honor to the Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children may sweet hosannas ring thou didst accept their praises accept the prayers we bring who in all good delightest thou good and gracious king praise god please be seated now you have palm branches. It's a little bit different how we had to do it probably from most years, uh, being able to process. And some churches, when we had children, we had the children come down to the center aisle, and they would wave the palm branches and hand them out to those of us on, on either side of the pews. And, uh, of course, we don't, aren't able to do that right now. But thank you for coming up and picking up a palm branch. And, you know, as we think about that day, we're also remembering how it was the children that actually went before him, and then there was also then the adults around Jesus and then following behind Jesus. And of course, whenever I read that, I think of the time that Jesus 
sat among his disciples, and the disciples, as the children were coming to him, they naturally gravitated to him. I could understand why, wouldn't you? And all of a sudden the disciples said, well, you know, take your children away. Let them come at another time. You know? Um, because he's here for us. And Jesus, calmly, but very firmly and definitively, definitively said, do not hinder the children. Let them come to me. For to such already belongs the kingdom of heaven. And then when they come, he then told his disciples and all those who wish to follow him, he says, if you want to be my disciple, you must make yourself like one of these little ones, ready and open to praise, ready to put aside any doubts and skepticism, and just come with trust. And so they came with palm branches because palm branches were that which were common. And the palm branch means something very significant. The palm branch itself, uh, you find in oases. You might see those in movies. But there'd be little communities that would form around oases because that's where you get water. And so the palm branch became something very important. It gave you shade. It meant that's where there was water for refreshing. It meant the place of blessing. And it also meant because everyone needed water, no matter who you were, when you went to that oasis, you then were accepted. There was no battle. There was no argument. You were both because of your common need. And so it became a symbol of peace, the palm branch. And so also, we look at our sanctuary, our fellowships, wherever they are around the world, as extending that palm branch to the world. Anyone and everyone belongs here, is welcome to you. We may have differences, we may disagree on certain things, but we all need the love and grace of Jesus Christ. That's what's also important about that palm branch. Now today we might say hi to someone special through different things. I got some confetti. I never see it around. Don't worry, God, you don't have to get anymore. I might have, if there are some kids here, I might have had them do that. Then we also have balloons. We hear of confetti parades, and we also know that people, you know, grab hold of balloons, and they blow them up, and you can see them flying, and they'll take them to parties and whatever. You know, there's many ways that we celebrate. Taking a palm branch is not one of those, typically, but it's so important that we remember that when we celebrate, what we are doing is we're inviting others to the celebration. We're saying, you're welcome here. I accept you. Blemishes and all, warts and all, whoever you are, you're welcome here. Because Jesus is love dwells here. And that's what God provided as Jesus went into Jerusalem, not riding on a stallion as a warrior, but coming in on the fold of an ass, saying, I come in peace. And I remember how he said to Jerusalem, in our reading that we had this last Sunday, O oh, Jerusalem, O oh, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you as a hen would gather her chicks, but you would not respond. So your house is left to you desolate. And will be desolate until you are able to cry out with the prophet said, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So our lives are the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. They will be desolate. Our churches will be desolate. Our communities will be desolate. Until we are willing to say and welcome the one who comes in the name of the Lord, and he will gather us in peace. Just a little thought behind some of the meaning of Palm Sunday for you. As we join together today, we also lift up the birthdays of Skip Bloss on the 28th. No, we aren't going to sing to you 
Um, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Skip, happy birthday to you. But there's also one up here who plays the piano who's having a birthday on the 3rd. So we're, you don't have to play this. Uh, we're going to sing it to you. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. May you feel Jesus near every day of the year. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. And the best that you've ever and Jocelyn has a birthday um, uh, on the 5th, along with Brian Holchansky. So I'm going to call you to go ahead and, and send a card, a uh, colorful card to Jocelyn. Let her know how much you uh, enjoy her and are pleased that God gave her birth. Pat Parker, I wonder who that might be. And she also has a birthday. And that comes on the 8th. And we also, though they're not back in town with us yet, Sandy and Bob Figgy's anniversary is on the 8th. I want to uh, uh, ask for your prayers for a, um, a Dick uh, Krebs. Um, uh, my friend uh, went down to, to be with them. And uh, Sharon uh, was a pastoral caregiver in a church that I was privileged to, share, to serve. And uh, Dick is up there, but he is now in hospice care and has limited time. And I know that Sharon is, is pretty much taken by that. So I'd ask for your prayers for Sharon Krebs as she deals with um, residing and caring for her husband, spending these last moments with him before he takes his, his residence with the one who loves him best and loves him most. We have the other prayer concerns before you. Are there those that you might have that you would like to, to have us remember? If so, you can also write them on a card. Please always write them on the prayer card and put them in the receptacle, either in the offering plate or the receptacle that's out in the lounge. Or you can also share them with us now. Yes, Miriam. Well, the Lord knows who he is, and I, we're going to, Marion asks that we might pray for a friend's son named Nikki, who is uh, struggling with addiction, and uh, praying that he might be relieved of that addiction and might resume a way of productive life. So we want to be praying for Nikki. Thank you. Are there any other concerns for prayer? Yes. It's kind of hard for a mother hen to let go of chicks to go out of town and no, no, you kind of say, go ahead, go ahead, I've, you've bothered me long enough. Okay, so we want to we might be praying for Julie's uh, youngest son, Stephen, as he's uh, finished his training as a welder and is taking a job down in Charleston. And he's going to be building submarines. He's going to be building submarines. Okay, very good. That'll be exciting. So we'll be praying for him. Charleston is a great city. I've been down there. It's a neat place. Any other concerns for prayer? Then I'm going to ask if we enter at a time of silent prayer, lifting up the concerns that we might have before us, but also those that might reside within our mind and our heart and we do not feel free to share. Let's pray for them silently for a moment and also for our own needs. And then Eileen will join us in our prayers of the people. On this day of great rejoicing, Lord Jesus Christ, when we welcome you as our King and Savior. 
We also walk in the shadow of your cross. Hosanna, we cry. Blessed are you who come in God's name to save us. Hosanna, strengthen our faith on this Palm Sunday so that when the time comes to carry the cross, we might still call out to you with heartfelt praise. Give us the grace and the courage to follow you this holy week, from death to resurrection, from darkness to the fullness of light. We need you, Lord Jesus, our Savior. Hosanna. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for Christ is the King of Peace. Let us turn to our neighbor, and even from a distance, give them a, a wave offering of thanks to God for their lives. And may the peace of Jesus Christ abide with you right at this moment and overflow from your lives even after we end our time of worship, because worship doesn't end when we leave this place. Everything we do, everything we say, our work, our pleasures, whatever, is also a matter of our worship to God. Let's sing together our fellowship song for today.
Let us unite our voices as one voice as we profess what binds us together as disciples of Jesus. Though we may be separated physically, we are never separated from God or from one another in heart and spirit. I believe, I believe in Christ, in Christ who, who rode in triumph into Jerusalem, Jerusalem. But, but I also believe in the Christ who died, died on Calvary. Calvary. I, believe I believe in the God, God who speaks in fire and storm, storm. but I but also I believe in the God, God of the still, small voice. I believe that God speaks through triumph and joy, but I also believe in God speaks through pain and challenge. I believe that being a Christian involves more than coming to church and being nice. I believe it means being faithful in every activity and involvement, and especially worshiping Christ in my private moments of solitude. I believe that the real triumphs of Christ are often small and unnoticed, occurring in the lives and decisions of people whose names will never appear in the news. I believe the best thing I can do for him today is not to say, I believe, but to act out my belief in love and justice for others. His is no hypocritical kingdom but a kingdom of truth and reality that shall exist forever. Amen. The written word, Genesis 21, 1 through 7. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised, Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh at me, or with me, sorry. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Eileen. Some questions of life and faith for you to consider. First one is, what surprises has God brought to you that fills you with rejoicing? What surprises in life has God brought you? What personal dream would you like to see fulfilled in your lifetime? Do you find joy in what God has delivered, or do you remain unfulfilled and disappointed in life?
as I, Monday morning, I opened up the scripture that I had selected for us for this day, and all of a sudden it was the birth of Isaac to Sarah. What I laughed at was the, uh, the circumcision. Now, a couple weeks ago I talked about circumcision. I told you a story about taking some, a group of, of teenagers that were in confirmation class to a synagogue, and there they got to see the implements of circumcision from years ago and their reaction. So, yeah, you can remember that story. I'm not going to retell it. But uh, the reason why I laughed uh, is because the very fact that yesterday morning, I, after our men's breakfast, I met with a young couple. One of uh, the, the husband-to-be is named Kyle Davis. And Kyle Davis was one of those boys. And I reminded him of that experience. And uh, he reminded me of some other experiences as well. Uh, so, you know, there are some impressions. But I remember for me, you know, I laughed as I read that. But I also remember I laughed at the experience that I had with those young people and many other times. There's many times that we're given to laughter, and there's different types of laughter. You know, we heard about Sarai when all of a sudden she listened in. Of course, women don't necessarily listen in on conversations of others, right? i uh, thinking of a child going by. My wife used to take a glass and put it against the door. Didn't you, babe? And, uh, and then when I would chastise her on that, she says, I'm a mom, I have the right to know. So Sarai also listened from within her tent as all of a sudden those angelic beings came and spoke to her husband Abram and told them for a second time that he was going to be a dad, that he was going to be the father of many nations, that God was going to bless him, that God through his, his family were going to inherit and be a great people. And from them that they would then be a blessing to all other peoples. 
that's an important thing to realize is that we are blessed that we can be a blessing to all others. And so she left. And the angel said, well, why is Sarah laughing? And of course, there's different types of laughter. There's the laughter of skepticism. <laughs> oh, yeah, right, okay. There's, there's also the laughter that comes uh, from when something is just, we say it's funny, but it's not really funny. It's just silly. I can't use the word I want to use because my granddaughter, I hear her voice. I mean, we don't use that word, Grandpa. Okay. And, and you know, but it's silly. It doesn't make sense. And we just kind of give this little, <laughs> but it's really kind of sad. <laughs> we laugh, but it's really kind of sad. Have you had those moments? But then there's also that big laugh, the laugh that we have when things are going our way, but then there's even a deeper laugh. I hope that you've experienced that laugh. The laugh that comes when God's promise to you has been fulfilled. You know, one of those promises that God has, has fulfilled for us is the fact of sending his own son, Jesus Christ, for us. So that we can be free from our sin and guilt and the chains that tend to bind us and load us down in this life, not alone in the life to come. That freedom, and I don't know if you can recall the time that you had a spiritual encounter. Maybe a time that you first said yes to God through Jesus Christ. It may be another time when all of a sudden going through some rough waters, all of a sudden in prayer, and you recognize that God brought you through, and you just laughed. And you wonder how come you doubted the promises of God in the midst of your trial, because of other times that God was faithful. You know, for Sarah, God had been faithful, as well as to Abram, many times, over and over again. And, and likewise, even in God's faithfulness, so Abram, you know, had a problem. He believed in faith, and God counted that as righteousness. But, you know, we waver in our faith, do we not? Have you ever wavered in your faith? A wavering not that you give up believing. A wavering in that you don't know whether God is with you when you go through this. Or whether you, you, you know that God wants you to do something. You, you feel intuitively it's from the Spirit and it's confirmed in the Word for you and you just do not really know whether <laughs> you're reluctant to do it. You don't have enough faith in doing that. And so, all of a sudden, we wonder about ourselves. I say I believe, but where's my faith? You can go on and add all sorts of different scenarios from your life or from the lives of others and be able to fill in that, those types of times, and then all of a sudden when you laugh, but there is a time in which all of a sudden something happened. You know, I told you the story about my son finally coming home. It was a time of great laughter. I can imagine that dad from the, the story in Luke and how he was watching for his son and all of a sudden saw him from a distance. He wasn't watching at a distance. And how he ran out to him and, and how there was joy. Oh, there's going to be a party. <laughs> Have you experienced the parties in your life with God? When God has fulfilled that promise, even when you question, I wonder what that dad thought as he looked down the road and days and days and months and months and didn't see the figure of his son in the distance. Well, I think about Simeon who was in the temple when all of a sudden he was waiting for the consolation of Israel, so the word says, but you know what that really means, consolation? He means the fulfillment of God's promises. And he had asked God, God, I don't want to leave this life to go to be with you until I've seen the consolation of Israel. And there all of a sudden in the temple area, there came Mary and Joseph and Jesus. 
and how we read that and how he took the child in his arms. Can you imagine how he took that child in his arms? How long he had waited for the promises of God to be fulfilled and there right before him in a little bundle in his arms was the consolation, was the fulfillment of the promise. Or Anna, who was a widow, had no children, had been married for a short period of time and be widowed for all the time after that. And she recognized Simeon had the same hopes and dreams. And she ran up and she blessed Mary and Joseph and Jesus. Do you imagine the joy? Do you imagine amongst all that crowd that was gathered there in the temple area, how they must have stood out because of the joy that they were experiencing? Oh, how wonderful that is. Now think of the joy of the children who found acceptance by a man named Jesus. They didn't necessarily comprehend the fullness of who he was, but they were run, willing to run ahead as he saw him sit on a donkey and start coming into town. They didn't have any pretenses. They didn't have any uh, unwillingness to, to, to show themselves and, and say those things that they were taught in their synagogue school, Hosanna, to God in the highest, the joy that they had, the exuberance they had. And imagine those adults that were going along with Jesus and maybe the little children led them because maybe the children were more apt to express joy than we, you know, sophisticated, mature adults. Imagine the joy as they came in and the hopes of these people that all of a sudden this man coming into town with hearing all that he had done, was coming into the city, the center of their government, the center of their faith, and their promises they had for centuries, that God would send a Messiah, an anointed one, who would be from the lineage of David, who would be the king of his people. And just imagine what this overtaxed, overburdened people must have felt. Ah, the joy. The joy they must have had. Now we read of Sarah all of a sudden having a laughter. All of a sudden, God was faithful. God was faithful to Sarah, the promise he had made to her. Listen to what it says. And the Lord came to Sarah as he said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. He did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. Well, she was up there too. At the appointed time, God had told him. Now I want you to think about what Sarah had gone through. She had wandered, followed her husband, from an established home out to a territory that God was going to show them, okay, I'm going along with you. Do we comprehend what she might have had in her thoughts and minds? Giving up her security to follow the call in a dream. Then all of a sudden, finding as they came to this territory, there's a famine. Oh, thanks a lot. You know, well, this God must be in this, you know. And all of a sudden, going down to Egypt, and here your husband decides to pass you off to the rulers there as his sister. And, of course, because she was a good-looking woman, he took her in, Pharaoh did. But then God protected, God provided, God stood up for Sarah and rescued her. And then they went on their way and they had other adventures and struggles with family as Lot and, and Abraham and they had to separate and all these things. And all of a sudden she remembered the promise that God had given and so he said she was going to make it happen. She said to her husband, you know, I did what you want me to do. Now you're going to do what I want you to do. You're going to take my servant Hagar and you're going to have a child with her because this is, this is really foolish. She laughed. Her laugh was a laugh of skepticism. And so he took Hagar, and all of a sudden he had a son with Hagar. That didn't work out too well, did it? And then all of a sudden she, whether Hagar really did show disdain for her, because, oh, you know, I'm the one he's going to love best. 
He goes, you know, I gave him a child, right? And so then she gave, became upset. And I, and I thought she probably figured that would, her dreams, her hope, would never be fulfilled. And then all of a sudden, you know, there's the promise again. You know, we can debate in our modern culture about a woman being fulfilled by having a child. I've talked to a lot of women who, despite their careers and their great women and careers, motherhood was a great challenge but also a great blessing. And I've also talked to a lot of women who wanted to be mothers. Many women who did, weren't able to be mothers and became mothers by adoption. And the joy that was upon their lives. I remember one family that was so interesting. They were a young couple. They were uh, on staff at the church that I served uh, outside of Rochester. And all of a sudden, they, uh, we were with them as she gave birth stillborn in the hospital, Denise. And so they had given up hope of, of being able to have a child, young couple, but the injuries due to her body. And so they gave up hope, and so they, they adopted a little girl from Russia, Mariah. She just had a baby just recently. My daughter became one of her nannies, if you would call it. And I remember when the whole church went to the airport, couldn't do that now. And all of a sudden, as they came off the plane with this little girl, we sang praises to God. Oh, the joy. You know, we laugh, but you know, God laughs at us. But soon after Mariah, all of a sudden, Denise unexpectedly became pregnant again. And she gave birth to Cameron. <laughs> ah, you know, God fulfills God's promises in different ways. But God always fulfills his promise. So all of a sudden, Sarah finds herself giving birth to a a son, something that she never thought would ever going to happen. She doubted God. She laughed. She scorned. But then all of a sudden her laughter turned to great joy. God gave her. Fulfilled the promise. I want to tell you that God always fulfills the promises he gives to us. We may not always like the way that, or the way that God fulfills those promises, but if you look back and you see God always fulfills his promises. Always. But imagine the time she had to wait. All that time. But you know, God fulfills his promises at his timing. And his way. Not our way. You know, she had tried her way, remember, with Agar. It didn't work out well. When we try to get ahead of God and we don't trust his promises, well, guess what happens? And you know, when Jesus came into town... They met him with great accolade. But within a few days, that changed, didn't it? Where were those children? You know, some scholars think that, well, what really happened is that the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests, they selected the people in the crowd, even rewarded them possibly with money because, you know, these times were times that were rough. So they came and that, they were part of the crowd. And those who were supporting Jesus were left and pushed back and you know, at the time of his trial. And when they cried out, crucify him, crucify him. I also, though, I don't have evidence for that, neither do the scholars, but I also wonder whether it was that they looked at him as coming in and being the answer, the fulfillment of the promise. And he didn't do it the way that they had expected. And they felt God had let him down. You ever feel that God has let you down? Maybe they turned on their faith because they felt disappointed, disillusioned, and the object of their anger would be this man who was, they wanted to hang on the cross, the one that their religious leaders had also said, he's not what you think. But you know, in despite their lack of faith and the evil that they performed, we know that God fulfilled his promises Listen to what Paul says in Galatians chapter 4. When the time was right, 
Think about that. All the history had gone on ahead of time. God was preparing a time, a specific time. We could talk about why that was the right time. It couldn't happen today because of our time and what we've come to embrace within our time. It, it, they couldn't come before that time because the culture, the Jews, the, the, the whole situ world situation wasn't right. But God knows the right time at just the right time. When the time came to completion, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law so that we might receive the adoption as God's sons and daughters. And because you are his sons and daughters, God has sent his spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Dad. Not just a God far off, but dad. You know the time. And so it was time. And Sarah gave birth. And imagine the joy that filled her heart. Imagine the joy that can fill our heart when all of a sudden we celebrate the resurrection. God has fulfilled his promise. And every time we follow the promises of God in our life today, when we kind of wonder, where are you, God? What are you doing, God? You made a promise of blessing and fulfillment in my life, but I'm not feeling it, God. And we then project that onto God, and we forget that God has a time. Do we wait for that time? Do we remain faithful during that time? <laughs> Do we laugh during that time? Do we grab hold of what God does provide for us in the midst of the, between the promise and its fulfillment? And even with Jesus coming back in resurrection, we are now on a journey still with promises. I promise not to leave you or forsake you. I promise that I'm going to give you the, my Holy Spirit to abide with you always. I promise you that if you abide with me, I will abide with you. I promise that I have gone to prepare a place for you, that I will also come back and I'll take you out of this broken, corrupt place into the place that I prepared for you. I promise. Can we laugh? And can we trust? Can we believe? that God always keeps his promises. We just don't know the time. Oh, as we're studying in our Bible study, now Jesus is talking about the end of the age and his return. We don't know when. But we know it will happen. We know that he will come and he'll right the wrongs, he'll heal the brokenness, he will make the world the way what we envision in our heart and our mind. He has promised. And he's never broken a promise. And he'll never break his promise to you. Believe it? So as you take your palm branch, thank God for the promise that no human being can ever break because God will always fulfill his promise in Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. I ask that you might pray with me. Lord, we believe and we follow we don't follow as well as what we should. We sometimes question where you are leading us. We question what you have allowed to come our way. We can't comprehend it fully. So sometimes we waver in our faith. We believe, but we waver in our faith. For some of us, we've heard the story the gospel, but we just can't believe it's true. It's too good to be true. And when we look at the world around us, we say, oh, it's just wishful thinking. 
And for those who feel that way, we just pray that they will trust the promise. That they'll say to themselves and to you, I, I give up, I surrender all, I just, I can't do it anymore, I, I want to follow you. And for those of us who struggle in our following, that we might remember the promise. And your promise is that even when we wander, that you take us back and embrace us with your love. Embrace us with your love. We are wounded, we are bruised by this life. We need you. Help us to wave our celebratory branches in acknowledgement that we believe your promises are true as we trust ourselves fully. Yesterday, today, in our uncertain tomorrows, in your promise. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Until we reach those times in which our promise is fulfilled, Jesus says, can you take up your cross and follow me? Let's rise to our feet and sing together number 415, take up thy cross, the Savior said. Take up thy cross, the Savior said, if thou wouldst my disciple be, deny thyself, the world forsake, and calmly follow after me. Take up thy cross, let not its weight fill thy weak spirit with alarm. His strength shall bear thy spirit up and brace thy heart and nerve thine arm. Take up thy cross, nor heed the shame, nor let thy foolish pride rebel. Thy Lord for thee, the cross endure to save thy soul from death and hell. Take up thy cross and follow Christ, nor think till death to lay it down. For only those who bear the cross may hope to wear the glorious crown. May the Lord crown you through your faith with the promises of glory and grace. May you find in what he brings your way this day the fulfillment of promises, part of a greater promise that he has given to you in life and in death and life beyond death. Praise Jesus Christ. May you laugh amongst those who laugh a different way in this world. But may your laugh be that of joy and peace and hope that only Christ can give. And give that away in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king soon and very soon. We are going to see the king. Hallelujah.